Hello mate and welcome back. In this video we're going to look at retexturing our clothing assets. Before I get started a huge thank you to everyone for subscribing and hitting that notification icon that really helps me out. Okay so let's jump into this then. Why do we need to do this? Well in a nutshell I see way too many texture packs being sold for clothing assets and all they essentially are is somebody's taken a texture, a really basic texture and painted over it with something else and then they've packaged it up and then they stick it on the Dash Studio store and expect you to pay 10, 15, 20 bucks for it and it takes literally minutes to do it yourself. So what you need to do is go into your file explorer in your library and you need to go into the runtime textures folder and find the clothing item that you're looking for. Alternatively what you can do is switch to the surface selection tool which is this one that looks like a mouse hovering over three swatches click on the surface that you want in this case we want the surface of the shirt and then in the surfaces tab you can see here what we have and here is the surface properties that we're looking for and you can see that this particular item of clothing has a bump map well if all we're doing is painting a new design on this t-shirt the bump map and the normal map can remain the same the glossy roughness could, could potentially change, but we can come back to that afterwards. The first thing that we're mainly interested in is the base color. And as you can see, if I hover over it, it actually tells us exactly where this texture is located. So what you need to do is go to that location and then load it up in Photoshop. So that's precisely what we're gonna do. So here we are in Photoshop. And as you can see, this texture is really, really basic now. Word of caution, not every single item that you try and edit the texture for is going to have a UV as well laid out as this. Unfortunately, there are a lot of content creators out there who are not very good at texturing their products and as a result, their UVs are all over the place. However, this is a simple vest top and as you can see, we've got front and back. And what we can do is we can actually use the quick selection tool to select the bit that we want. So for example, that's just selected all of the blue area on the back. So we could, if we wanted to, create a new layer and create a layer mask for that. Now what we can do is come back to our original image and let's say I want to now select the blue area of the front. I can do that again. I can create a new layer and then create a layer mask. And now I've got the blue areas all selected. If I wanted to, I could also do a selection by color or there are any, any number of ways of selecting. You could just use a pen tool and work your way around the outside, although that is a really unnecessarily an extreme way of doing it. So let's say for argument's sake, all I want to do is change the color of this t-shirt and then change this design on the front. So the first thing that I need to do realistically is I need to get rid of this hand print. And there are various ways that I can do it, but all I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the clone stamp tool here, like so. And I'm actually going to create a new layer for this one, because I want to keep these layer masks, but for something else. So I've created a new layer. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down the Alt key, and I'm going to sample a piece of the texture over here. And then I'm going to make my mouse nice and big. And then I'm just going to paint over this several times. And as you can see, lo and behold, we got rid of the logo. So now we've got a nice, clean looking t-shirt here of a particular color now what you if you wanted to you could realistically you could come in and you could create a whole new design you could use your lasso tool for example and let's just create a new layer again and you could go crazy you could design some kind of weird tribal print on the front of it like let's just go with that and then we can end up up there so now that i've done that i can create a new layer mask or I can just simply fill it. So that's what we'll do. Let's just fill this up with black. So we'll grab our paint bucket tool. We're gonna to fill this with black like so. Now what we can do is because we've gone over the edge ever so slightly here and here, and we don't necessarily want that, what we can do is hold down the Alt key, click on the layer mask for the front and drag it onto there. And then that will create the layer mask that we're after. So we can now click off of that. And there you can see, we now have our layer mask but that looks a little bit weird doesn't it just having it black and not to mention that my freehand drawing style is pretty shocking so let's just change this we'll go to maybe multiply dark and color burn because it's solid black realistically the most sensible thing to do is to either go to overlay 
or just to adjust the opacity. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to drop the opacity down like this. And let's say we wanted to add an effect to this as well. We could double click on it. And then in our options here, we've got different options. We could add some kind of outer glow to it, perhaps. Let's try that. We could make it look a bit neon. Now that's not particularly great. So we need to adjust our, our outer glow. We need to change, drop the spread down and maybe increase the size. It looks a bit more like a glow now, doesn't it? Let's drop the spread down even more. Bring the size down a little bit there. And we could change the color so we could go for some kind of more bluish kind of glow there. And that gives us a bit of a, almost like a Tron-y kind of glow effect underneath there. Um, that looks kind of weird, but it could work. Let's just go for our effects again. We'll get rid of the outer glow. Let's maybe give it a drop shadow. We can drop shadow that. Drop down our opacity of the drop shadow a little bit. I hope that's the opacity of the actual item. Let's just bring that back up. And we know that our opacity wasn't 100%. It was more kind of around there. As we select our drop shadow properties, we can drop that down. We can increase the distance so that it's very clearly a uh, shadow. And that gives us a kind of unique effect. So what happens if I want to change the color of the main t-shirt? Well, if I hold down control there, and then I hold down control shift and there, now you can see that I've selected both the layer masks. And what I can do is I can now create a new adjustment layer by clicking on that icon there. And I'm going to go with hue and saturation. Now what I can do is I can actually drag this around until I find a color that I like. Maybe I want them to have a bright green t-shirt or a red t-shirt or you know, the, the options are limitless and you can obviously make it black and white. You can increase the saturation so that it looks entirely different like that. And then all you have to do is save your texture as you want it saved. So go ahead and do that. Save it into the same folder as you found the original texture, but obviously give it a fresh name and then we'll pick up back inside Dash Studio. So now that we're back in Das Studio, what we need to do is actually click on our base color in the surfaces tab and hit browse. Then we just need to double click on the file that we've created and lo and behold, our shiny new texture is located in there like that. And you can do this as much as you want. You can just select off of that. As you can see there, perfect, really cool. Custom, nobody else has this t-shirt design because I've made it myself. So it's completely original and I didn't have to pay 15 or 20 bucks for somebody else to spend the five minutes doing that. Thanks very much for watching that guys. I hope you found that useful. Let me know what you think in the comments below and I will see you in the next one. But until then, you take damn good care of yourselves, all right? Bye-bye.